about, a little confused as we were about why the offense was so good in the first quarter and then wasn't as good after that. Have you, you're looking at the tape, but you come to the conclusions. Yeah, it was the uh, number of missed opportunities. I think that could be said for every unit throughout the game. Uh, offensively, we started very efficiently uh, in the first quarter with two really strong drives resulting in touchdowns. And then uh, really for the second and third quarters, didn't get much rhythm at all. And the second quarter, I think we only ran nine plays on offense. And there were chances uh, to convert and get first downs. Uh, we weren't able to do that, unfortunately. And then uh, that kind of bled into the third quarter. And then the fourth, we moved it a little bit more. But ultimately, we got to put the ball in the end zone. And we had we had plenty of chances and uh, some plays that we would expect to make. And we didn't make those. So we, as coaches, have to make sure we're giving them every opportunity and putting them in a position to uh, have success out there. And then the uh, players got to go out and execute it. And coaches talk about quarterbacks having command on the field, and you've got a quarterback who's a three-year starter. How would you evaluate how he played, and what did you think about how he looked like he was in charge or not so much? I think uh, Chase had some some good moments. Uh, I think there's some plays that he would probably like to have back, and we're going to continue to work with him. Uh, and Bill, with the uh, you know being his position coach and his coordinator, will continue to work with him on things that he can improve upon, and we'll also try to do things that Chase does well you know, within our game plan. So continue to, to push him just like every other player on the team. Did he have opportunities downfield that he didn't take, or did you guys just not execute yeah. those? I think there was a couple chances for us to, to make some plays down the field uh, when we went back and watched the video. And again, this is uh, those are learning opportunities, but we, we also have to take the next step and uh, take advantage of those because we had the opportunities during the game, uh, whether it's quarterback, receiver, run game, or on defense, uh, getting off the field by knocking a ball down on a third down or on, you know, in the special teams by hunting and uh, covering better and, and converting a field goal. So, you know, everybody has chances to, to make uh, some more plays and plays that we would expect to make. Um, so whether it's quarterback position, defense, or special teams, uh, that'll be our focus this week. Obviously, you don't want to get too risky throwing the ball down the field, throwing in a tight <clears> coverage. But what's the the line between you know throwing a receiver open and, and trusting them to make a play versus getting careless? Yeah, I mean, there's a you know everybody you play in college football, the defenses don't routinely bust and leave people wide open. So we have to be in rhythm and uh, have confidence in our training and trust our training and, and throw the ball on time where it's supposed to go. And then the receivers have to run the correct route at the correct depth and go make the play, whether it's receiver, tight end, running back, whoever that is. So I think uh, it's all part of it, you know, the O-line's part of it. And, uh, but to answer your question, yeah, it's not routine that, you know, defenses just bust and leave people wide open all over the field. It's, you know, everybody has good coaches and good players. And so we got to uh, do a good job of preparing uh, for those opportunities, and when they're there, we got to take advantage of them. Outside of executing better, did you see some things that you really want to see the team, the offense, do better next time? Well, I think it's uh, staying on the field and converting on third downs. Uh, we got a, you know, I think one of the drives, maybe the first one in the second quarter, we had a, we had a penalty on a uh, shorter down and distance, and then uh, we had a penalty followed by a sack. Um, but. You know, there was a number of opportunities to uh, convert. And that's where you're, I think Trace asked after the game, you know, getting back to the run game. Well, we, we only ran nine plays in the second quarter. We didn't really run many plays at all, whether it's run or pass. So I think uh, converting on third downs, uh, creating some explosive plays. We all know that we need to create more explosive plays. And so we as coaches got to do a great job. And then when there are opportunities there for explosive plays, we got to take advantage of them. And that's how the offense can perform better. Uh, moving on to TCU, what stands out about what they did last week and what you've seen on the Yeah. Uh, you know, what we've, I think, come to know TCU as. I mean, they're athletic uh, across the board. You look on offense with their, uh, their backs, the receivers, uh, the quarterback, his athleticism, they uh, are run a spread offense and are very, very efficient. Uh, quarterback's a very good player. Uh, 
defensively very aggressive. It's you know, Coach Patterson is known for four two five nickel, a lot of quarters. Uh, the corners play a ton of man to man and challenge you. Uh, the safeties are involved, really tight coverage and in the run game. Uh, and then they're good up front. I mean, it's a very talented team. They're covered, they're very good in special teams. They'll they've created returns uh, on most people they play, and so we'll have to do a great team, great job on special teams as well. But they're they're a very good football team. Yeah, we faced a lot of uh, two two high safeties last week. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you have a better read on how to play against that as an offense? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, in our schedule you're going to see teams that play single high you're going to see t teams that play too high when you talk too high sometimes it's uh, Tampa two sometimes it's quarter quarter half sometimes it's uh, quarters across the board so there's different forms of two high safeties so the two high safeties we saw last last week's a little different than the two high safeties we would expect to see this week um, you know there's as we prepare throughout the offseason and even in camp, I mean, that's what we do every day. We go against our defense, which runs both single high and split safety defenses. So um, we, we would feel good about our plan going in. And as we know, there's adjustments that need to be made during the game. And uh, our, our coaches you know, on the offensive and defensive side are, are very, very good with that. And uh, we'll expect to have a good plan going in and make whatever adjustments needed during the game. Justin, when you're playing a team that <clears throat> Won so easily last week against you know a pretty overmatched opponent. They actually played what, as you know, probably 12 minute quarters in the second half. Do you wonder? They probably didn't show us everything. Are we going to see some wrinkles that they didn't have to use in their first game? Yeah, but I, I would say that's probably true each and every week. You know, there's uh, Coach Patterson and their staff. They're, they're good coaches, and, and there's going to be wrinkles. They're going to watch our game, uh, and. You know whether it's uh, you know deceptive or maybe it's a scheme that they didn't run as much last week, but maybe this week they like a little bit more. So we do self scout as well, trying to prepare for those things. Uh, in the end, I would you know anticipate them leaning on what they do well, uh, and I would have uh, not not that they're going to you know totally change in one week. We wouldn't anticipate that, uh, just like we would. But uh, I'm sure each and every week uh, that we line up this season, there's going to be wrinkles from the team we're playing. Does it help that he's been their coach 20 years and you've actually played them? And so, I mean, it's not like yeah. you know, he's kind of got a the way he does things probably, right? Yeah, th yeah, I think so, just like we all do. I mean, we all have a fingerprint in terms of our style of play and, you know, maybe packages on offense and defense. You know, I, we're going to see 11 personnel. We'll see some 12, but we're going to see you know, a lot of 11 from them. They're going to run 4-2-5 nickel. Uh, I don't think, you know, I, I, again, during a given week, I don't see people changing significantly from one week to the next. I don't know that anybody has a ton of success doing that, but they'll have game plan uh, specific things that they do for us, just like we would do for them. Um, and he has uh, a strong history of, of what they've done, and they've done it very well. And it ultimately comes down about executing the plays, either side of the ball. Looking at the film, um, what do you look to improve on in special teams? And yeah, punt unit has got to be better. We got to punt the ball better. We got to cover it. Uh, we can't give up chunk returns like that. Uh, our kickoff team was improved. We'd like to get the ball into the end zone a little bit more. And I thought in the return games, we had a couple good returns. We all we also uh, left some yards out there in the return game. And so plenty to clean up. Uh, obviously, we got to we have PATs and field goals. We need to execute those and put them through the uprights. So there's a lot to improve upon. In special teams as well. With the punting, um, it looked like Sheehan was under pressure a decent amount, at least on the last couple of picks. With, with their blocking issues there too. Uh, no, the the pressure issues really probably came a little bit earlier, um, and there are times when, uh, you know, based on how we're covering or how we're protecting, we we will get the ball off quicker, and other times it. Uh, we might not, but we got to understand what the rush team is doing. If they're if they're rushing or are they dropping out, so we can, uh, you know, get a good punt off. I mean, he's very capable. We we practiced uh, all spring and fall with Jam, and I think he'll have a much better week this week. Do you have any sense yet of whether Chris Brooks will be available to play? We anticipate him yeah, being ready. So um, there's really nothing more to report there. Yeah. Can you talk about how your running backs played when, when you did run the ball? Yeah, I thought Damian Moore had some 
nice runs, uh, you know, things that he's shown during camp. Uh, it was nice to see uh, DeCarlos in there make a couple of good runs. DeCarlos uh, got into the second level and showed some of his speed, I thought. And, you know, Dancy had a couple of good runs in there. And Chris, when he was uh, healthy, was in there, made a, uh, a couple really nice runs as well. So we want to be able to lean on that group and running the football and helping our offense produce first downs and points. Do you, would you like to be more stubborn about the run? Well, again, I think <clears throat> we want to run the football, but we also have to run enough plays to run the football. And so I think where we, last week, the rhythm got thrown is, you know, the second quarter and really a uh, good amount of the third was not having enough plays to, to get any rhythm going. You have to convert, uh, you know, either get it, not get into a third down, so we get a first and second down off of a first or second down, uh, and then not have to you know be in third and long. So we have to convert, uh, keep those drives going, so we can run the football more. You know, you um, you held a team that's got a lot of offensive weapons to two touchdowns, um, but were there some things in your secondary that you had concerns with? Yeah, the deep balls. I mean, there were three. Explosive passes. I think 43, 43, and 46. One of them was really poor eye control uh, on the touchdown, and then the other two we got beat over the top, uh, one on one, and we got to rely on our technique and trust our training there. And I think those guys can make those plays. Uh, the quarterback made a couple of very good throws, no doubt about that. But I, uh, I think, you know, that the, the uh, three explosive passes. Where we would feel a lot differently if we would have defended, you know, one or two of those even better uh, coming out of the game. So you guys played TCU two and a half, three years ago. I guess what are some of the big differences you see from that? I mean, personnel is obviously going to be different, but yeah. are they mostly similar to what they did then? Yeah. Again, I you know, Coach Patterson ran four, two, five nickel quarters for a long time and they're very good at it. They have each and every season, like any team, will have some uh, different strengths and weaknesses and <clears throat> they'll, you know, uh, they might change, you know, uh, maybe they'll have a different style of blitz or maybe a certain coverage they like a little bit more because of their personnel, but structurally it looks very similar.